Oh, hello everyone and welcome back to Kids Church at North Point. I'm excited to have you guys with us today. I'm especially very excited today because we get to talk about one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament. But first, can you guys believe that it has been over a month since we've last met here? Man, that really, really stinks. But like we say every week, we are very thankful and very blessed that we still get to do church this way online. And that way we can still be able to have church, which is still really, really, really cool. And like I said, we get to talk about one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament. I think you guys are going to like it too. So just a quick recap of everything we've been talking about so far, because it's all connected. We've been talking about how we can trust God in different situations. The first week of Kids Church, we talked about how we can trust God even when things don't make sense. And we talked about that with a man named Abraham and his son Isaac. And then the next week, we talked about Isaac and his sons, Jacob and Esau, and how we can trust God even when we mess up. And then last week, we took a break and went for Easter, and we talked about how we can trust God because of Jesus. And now this week, we're going back into the Old Testament back to this family we've been talking about with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Esau. And now we're going to talk about Jacob and mostly his son, Joseph. All right, so here's what's going to happen. You guys are going to watch a quick video that's going to tell us the story of Joseph. And then afterwards, we're going to talk about it and see what we can learn from it. Here we go. God's story, Joseph. So part of God's story is about a guy named Joseph. And it begins like this. Once there was a guy named Joseph who had ten older brothers and one younger one. When Joe was a boy, he was his dad's favorite. In fact, his dad liked him so much better than his brothers that he gave Joe a special gift to prove it. You can imagine this made his brothers jealous. And Joe only made things worse. He told his brothers about dreams he had where he was ruling over them. Well, this made Joe's brothers furious. One day they were working and saw Joe coming. They said, here comes that dreamer. They threw Joe into a dark pit. They might have left him there forever, but they met some men traveling from Egypt and sold Joe to them as a servant instead. They thought that was slightly nicer than leaving him in a pit. Then they went home and told their father Joe had been killed by a wild animal. This broke their dad's heart. Kids, these brothers were really bad news. Selling a sibling is never a good idea, ever. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joe. When Joe was a servant, he worked for a really important rich guy named Potiphar. And Potiphar liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of the whole house. Joe was happy until one day he was blamed for something he didn't do, and Potiphar sent him straight to jail. Well, God was still with Joe, even in prison. The guard decided he liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of all the other prisoners. Then God gave Joe special knowledge about dreams. When two prisoners had dreams, Joe knew what they meant, so he told them. Two years later, Egypt's ruler called Pharaoh had a dream, and nobody knew what it meant. But by now, one of the two prisoners Joe had helped was out of jail and working for Pharaoh. He told Pharaoh about Joe, and God helped Joe figure out what Pharaoh's dream meant. But Pharaoh's dream was really more of a nightmare. It meant that everybody in Egypt would have food for seven years, then be hungry for seven years. Joe told Pharaoh the only way to survive was to store food during the seven good years. Well, Pharaoh thought Joe's idea was brilliant. He put him in charge. During the seven hunger years, nobody could eat without getting food from Joe. He was like a human vending machine. Well, remember how Joe had 11 brothers? Like everybody else, they had to get food from Joe. And when they came, they didn't even recognize their brother. But Joe knew who they were. He secretly tested them to see if they changed. After all, they did throw him in a pit and sell him. Finally, he couldn't hide who he was from his brothers anymore. He told everyone to leave the room because he was about to cry. After sobbing for a few minutes, he told them, I'm your brother Joseph. I'm the one you sold. The brothers couldn't believe it. They had hurt Joe, but God had taken care of him during the good times and the bad. Even with everything they had done to Joe, he forgave them because he was willing to follow God even when it was hard. Joe told them, you plan to harm me, but God planned it for good. And God used Joe to save many lives, including the family that was part of God's special rescue plan. And that's the story of Joseph. 
So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Joe is his dad's favorite. His brother sold him. Potiphar put Joe in charge. Joe was sent to jail. The guard put Joe in charge. Pharaoh had a bad dream. Joe told him what it meant. Pharaoh put Joe in charge. Joe's brothers had to come to him for food. Joe forgave them. This was part of God's rescue plan. And that's a part of God's story. Man, my goodness. Is that not a cool story? Man, Joseph went from slave, from hated brother, to prisoner, to second in command of all of Egypt. And it's so cool. Whenever we look back at the story of Joseph, we talk about at the very beginning, Jacob had a favorite son, which is so crazy to me. Because if you remember right, whenever we talked about his family, his dad Isaac and his mom Rebecca had favorite sons too, and it caused their whole family to mess up. And now all of a sudden, Jacob now has a favorite son too. Man, did he not learn his lesson? What's with this guy? So he has a favorite son, and that favorite son is Joseph. And Joseph knows he's his dad's favorite, and it gets on his brother's nerves. He has ten older brothers and one younger brother, and the ten older brothers can't stand him because he is their dad's favorite, and they just get tired of it really, really, really quick. And to make matters worse, Joseph keeps having these dreams about how he's going to rule over his family, and he's kind of snobby about it, and it, it makes it so much worse with his brothers, and they can't stand him, finally to the point where they're like, you know what, we're done with this guy. Let's throw him in a pit and leave him to die. Who cares? We're just done with him. And so they do just that. They throw him into the pit, and they were going to kill him. But the oldest brother, he's like, you know what, guys? Let's, let's not get too crazy here. We, we may not like him, but we're not going to kill him. We're not killers. Instead, right over there, I see this caravan that's of traders. They're going to Egypt. Instead of killing him, let's sell him to them, and they'll take him to Egypt and sell him as a slave. He's out of our lives, out of sight, out of mind. And so that's exactly what they do. They pull Joseph up out of the pit and they sell him to this caravan who's going to Egypt. And so now you kind of see a shift in Joseph. He was almost kind of bratty before. He's like, you know what? I'm dad's favorite and this, that, and whatever. You know, he's just real smug about it. And now all of a sudden, he's being sold as a slave to Egypt. You kind of see a shift in him from, from kind of bratty to, to not really having anybody else in his life. And all of a sudden, he kind of changes to really relying on God. And he trusts God with everything because God's the only person he really has left in his life. And it says that God was with Joseph. And that's really cool. Joseph trusted God, and God was with Joseph. And so Joseph goes to Egypt. He's sold as a slave to a very important man in Egypt. His name is Potiphar, and he works his way up the ranks until he's in charge of Potiphar's entire house. And then something else bad happens to Joseph. Potiphar's wife blames him for something that he really didn't do at all. Man, could you imagine that? Getting blamed for something that you never did and then having to go to jail for it? Man, that really, really stinks for Joseph. First, my brothers hate me, and they sell me as a slave to a whole nother country. And now all of a sudden, somebody's lying about me about something I didn't even do. And now I'm just sitting in jail? But really cool again, as we looked in that story, it says God was with Joseph. And so Joseph is in prison, but God is with him. And he works his way up the ranks of the prisoners until the jailer's like, you know what? You're such a good dude, Joseph. I want you in charge of the whole entire prison. Like, you're going to run the prisoners, dude. You're in charge. And that's really, really cool for Joseph. And as you guys saw in the story, Joseph is up there. And eventually, Pharaoh has some dreams that nobody can interpret. And if we remember at the beginning of Joseph's story, we remember that he had some dreams and he knew what they meant. And he was able to have this gift from God of being able to interpret in certain dreams like this. And so, the Pharaoh has dreams that nobody can interpret. And word gets around that Joseph can interpret these dreams. So Pharaoh goes to get Joseph from prison, and Joseph interprets the dreams. He's like, there's going to be seven really, really, really good years. Food everywhere, plenty of it. But it's also going to be followed by seven bad years of, of not a lot of food around. And he's like, you know what, Pharaoh, I think... I think what you should do is in those seven good years, save some so that that way, whenever it comes to the seven bad years, you've got a whole bunch saved up. 
and that way nobody's going to be able to go hungry. So just take some out of the good years, save it up, that way people can eat in the seven bad years. And Pharaoh is like, dude, that's a brilliant idea. You're, you're really smart. You know what, Joseph? I want you to be second in command of the whole country of Egypt. Man, how cool is that? Joseph, again, the brother that everybody hated. He was the favorite son, but he was sold as a slave. And then he was a slave. And then he was a prisoner. And now all of a sudden, he's second in command of all of Egypt. And so all these things come to pass, right? The seven good years happen. They save up a lot of food. The seven bad years come. And all of a sudden, not only does Egypt not have any food in this, in this famine time, but all these other countries are experiencing it too. And word gets around that Egypt has got a lot of food saved up. And so other countries are now coming to Egypt, to Joseph, to feed them because they don't have any food in their own land. And among them are Joseph's brothers. Joseph's brothers come to Egypt and they don't, they don't even recognize their brother. And Joseph takes this opportunity to play a few tricks on them. He wants to make sure that they've changed, right? The last time he saw them, they were pulling him out of a pit and selling him as a slave. For all he knew, they could still be those same bad guys. But as we know in the story, his brothers did change. They regretted what they did. They were very sad. And eventually Joseph reveals himself to them as their brother. And of course, they're really, really scared, right? Our brother's second in command of this country. We may die because of what, he di- of what we did to him, right? He could retaliate and get his revenge. But Joseph forgave his brothers, and he loved his brothers. And so it's a really, really, really cool story. And so at the very, very end here, we get our big idea for today. It's that we can trust God even when people hurt us. Joseph said something very, very important. He said, you guys, my brothers, you meant something evil against me. You guys wanted to hurt me. You guys wanted to kill me. And you sold me as a slave, and you meant something against me as very, very bad. But God had a plan, and God is good, and it is awesome. You guys meant for me to be sold as a slave. You guys probably even wanted me to die. But God knew that, and he used those choices, and he was able to orchestrate this whole plan so that someday I might become second in command of this whole country and save all of these lives. God had a plan, even though you meant me evil, which is really, really cool. Joseph's story is so resilient. He's just a resilient guy. He kept getting knocked down, and he got right back up because he knew God was with him. Whenever I think of somebody who is resilient or something that was resilient, just like Joseph. You know what comes to my mind? I'm kind of a sports guy. I love football. And if you grew up in Buffalo, or if you know anything about Buffalo football, and you know about resiliency, you know that in 1992, it's a few years ago, 1992 is when I was born. In 1992, the Buffalo Bills were down 35 to 3. They were going to lose this ball game in the playoffs. But they didn't quit, and they kept going, and they eventually won the game. And I want you guys to watch that really quick so that you guys can get a a handle, a feeling on what resiliency really looks like. Doing the throw. Little pump fake comes back. Hides some time. Throws. Touchdown for Houston. Little play action fake in the end zone. Touchdown. Doing the deep. And it is caught. What a catch by Curtis Duncan. Moon goes deep. Touchdown, Houston. Black goes far side. This is intercepted. And down the far sideline is Bubba McDowell. And Houston moves out in front now 34 to 3. Here is Davis. Thanks for the corner. Buffalo's first touchdown of the ball game comes with 8.52 left to go in the third. Right to throw. Down the side. Oh, the Lord! Big East score! Right high step. Has another man open. Back to the end zone is Andre Reed. Still going for it at fourth and five. Into the end zone. Has a man. Touchdown! Buffalo trailing by four. Right to throw. In zone. Touchdown. 
Marv Levy with the, ex well, semi-excited reaction. And at this point, that's the greatest comeback in NFL history. Down 35 to 3. Now the Bills are up 38 to 35 with a little more than three minutes remaining. 26 yards for the top. And it is good from 26 yards away. We are tied 38-38. We are headed for overtime. Moon needs three yards. Has the time close. It is intercepted. Buffalo has the ball. Nate Odom. An attempt of 32 yards for the win. It is right down. Man, is not that the coolest thing, right? They were down. It looked like they were down and out 35-3. to three. How are you going to come back to win that game? But they kept going and going and going, and they didn't give up. And it's a really cool story of resiliency. And Joseph showed some of that same resiliency. He wasn't playing a football game. He was living real life, though. And he kept getting knocked down. He was sold as a slave. He was put in prison for something he didn't do, but he didn't quit because he knew God was with him. He could trust God even when people were hurting him because God's love is so big. God is 100% love. The Bible says that God is love. God would never give up on us. God would never hurt us. And that's really, really cool for us is that we can trust God even when people hurt us because God never will. And that's our big idea for today. And that is what we are learning, is that we can trust God even when people hurt us. Because people hurt us all the time, right? This is true then for Joseph. It's still true for us now. People hurt us all the time. People say mean things to us. Sometimes our siblings say mean things to us every day, don't they? Man, people say mean things to us. People at school, our friends, maybe family members say some things sometimes. People do mean things to us as well. Friends, again, everybody, that sometimes we're just mean to other people and people are mean to us because we're just not made out of 100% love like God is. So in this story, it teaches us that even though people will hurt us, we can trust God because he never will. And that is what we're learning today, and that is it. So let us go have some fun. All right, here we go. It's time to have some fun. All right, so this week I have... Addison with me say hello but you can't do it in let's see we have Spanish we have French and we have American Sign Language so try something else what do you got uh. hey hey does not sound foreign where does that come from Swedish, Swedish. how do you spell it h-e-j is that what it was <laughs> hey hey that sounds Swedish if you say it with a j at the end hey I like it nice job all right so here's what we're going to do today we're talking about how we can trust God even when people hurt us and we've got some things here that's going to help illustrate the point of God's love and how he can't hurt us because he's God and he's awesome and fantastic so I've got with me this bucket that represents our love all right and inside I've got some water I've got some empty glasses here and I've got this sponge so Addison what I would like for you to do is to take that sponge and try to get as much love out of this bucket into this glass because whenever we have love inside of us we want to give our love to other people right we love our parents we love our friends we love the rest of our family I mean, there's a lot of people that we love and we want to take our love and give it to somebody else so I want you to try and take as much love as you can out of yourself and give it to somebody else maybe that's a dad or a mom or sister Lucille or something like that all right see what we see what we can do that's really good that's really good good effort let's see not bad not bad Pretty good. Let's cheer her on. Addison, 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 Addison. Oh, the crowd goes wild. What? That's pretty good. That's really good. Pretty good. All right, let's look at this here for a second. Our bucket is empty for real this time, right? All right, we've got an empty bucket, and we have a glass that's almost full. 
but it's not full. And see, whenever we think about ourselves, we want to love other people. We try really hard. But the fact of the matter is, we're not 100% love. We're not completely made out of love, are we? Sometimes we have greed and we're jealous. Man, sometimes we, we're angry with people when we shouldn't be. I mean, there's a lot of things that make us up and we're just not completely love. That's why sometimes we're mean to other people and other people are mean to us. We just don't have 100% love left to give. There's always going to be a gap there. But the really cool thing is that... Oh, God's love is way, way, way bigger than our love. The Bible says God is is love. He's 100% love, and we're not. So here's what I want you to do this time. I want you to take that sponge, and I want you to dip into God's love, and I want you to try and fill up. You know what? I'll bring it up on this side. We'll scoot this person right over here, and I want you to try and use God's love to fill up somebody this time, and let's see how this goes this time. Nice, nice. We're already halfway there and that was one squeeze. Look at that. Nice. That's right, fill it up. Fill up yourself again. I like it, do it. Good job. Look at that. Man, God's love is so much bigger and so much better than our love. Good job. At a girl. Whenever we look at God's love, his love is so much bigger and so much better than ours. Even though we try really, really hard, sometimes we are just mean to other people and other people are mean to us because we just don't have that much love to give. And that's okay because God forgives us. And even though we do mean things to other people and mean people do things to us, God never does because he is 100% good and 100% love and we can trust him even when people are mean to us and whenever people hurt us. All right, and that is what we're going to learn for today. Let us pray and then we will get out of here. Father, I thank you um, for giving us this opportunity to be able to be together today and to be able to open up your word and to be able to learn from it. I thank you for the story of Joseph and the example that it is for us that we're able to, to trust you even though people mean uh, mean against us and they're they're trying to, to put us down and, and to hurt us God I thank you that we can trust you God and that you don't hurt us and that you love us 100% Father again I thank you for this time together and we pray that you're with us during the rest of the week that you keep us safe we pray that we return safely back here next Sunday God it's in your name we pray amen all right that is it for this week and we will see you next Sunday